I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about partial fractions. In number 27, we'd like to evaluate the integral of 81 over x cubed minus 9x squared dx. All right, again, we're using partial fractions, so we're going to want to break this up using partial fractions. But what I want to do before I do that is I kind of don't really want to play around really that much with the 81. So I'm just going to bring the 81 outside of the integral. And so now I just have 1 over x cubed minus 9x squared dx. And now I'm just going to uh, use partial fractions on the 1 over x cubed minus 9x squared instead of the 81. So I'll have to remember that the 81 is there at the end of the day, but for now let's just take it out. So now let's factor this completely. So I get 1 over. Uh, I can factor out an x squared, and if I factor out x squared I'm left with x minus 9. Okay, so if I'm breaking this up into partial fractions, x squared is a linear term squared, so it gets two fractions. It gets 1 for a over x, and it gets 1 b over x squared. So x gets a fraction, and x squared gets a fraction. Then this other linear term, x minus 9, also gets a fraction. All right, now we can clear out the fractions by multiplying through by x squared times x minus 9. If I do, I get that 1 is equal to uh, a times uh, x times x minus 9 plus b times x minus 9 plus c times x squared. All right, and now I'm ready to solve for a, b, and c. Okay, so if I, uh, I could choose some different things for x, let's start out, let's let x equal zero. If x is zero, then this term is zero, and this term is zero, so I just get that one is equal to, uh, if x is zero, negative, 9 uh, times b. And b is equal to negative 1 over 9. Okay, uh, then if x is equal to 9, I get 1 is equal to that's 0, that's 0, and I get 81 c. So c is 1 over 81. And finally, I need another value to determine a, uh, but there's no good choices left. We use 0, we use 9. Uh, so what I'd like to do is let's just take the x squared terms. So I write it like this, and I just say, so how many x squareds are there on the left side, and how many x squareds are there on the right side? Well, x squareds on this side, there are none of them. There are no x squareds on the left. So it's 0 is equal to how many x squareds come out of this term? Well, I get a times x times x, so I get a of them. How many x squareds come out of this thing? None. How many x squareds come out of this thing? C, so plus C. So I get that 0 equals A plus C. I know what C is. It's 1 over 81. So that means that uh, A must be equal to negative 1 over 81. And so we've got our A, our B, and our C. Now we can rewrite our integral. So here's our integral. Let's move it right over here. This is equal to 81 times the integral of a over x. a was negative 1 over 81 times, um, I'm sorry, times an x on the bottom. Okay. Then we get b over x squared. b is negative 1 ninth, so I get minus 1 over 9x squared. 
And then finally I get C over X minus 9 or plus 1 over 81 times X minus 9. All of that dx. And you can see right now, well, if I multiplied through by the 81 at this point, a lot of things would clean up. So let's just do it. Uh, so I have an integral of negative 1 over x uh, minus 9 over x squared plus 1 over x minus 9 dx. Okay, let's take the antiderivative. Antiderivative of negative 1 over x is negative ln of absolute value of x. Antiderivative of negative 9 over x squared, we bump the power of x squared up. Uh, this is negative x to the negative 2. Bump the negative 2 up to negative 1 and divide by negative 1, and we get plus 9 over x. And then finally, this is also a natural log, so plus ln absolute value of x minus 9 plus c. And we have our antiderivative. Now, if I wanted to, I could combine the ln of x minus 9 and the negative ln of absolute x into one fraction if I really wanted to using the rules of logarithms, but this is a sufficient answer.